Hey, Denarland Ninja here. Today is Friday, June 14th, 2019. Um, this is some from the Denarland highlights. Okay, Militiaman KTFA said, They're clearly doing as they told us they would, and even on time or early. The CBI told us on the 10th they would have an intensive media campaign. They sure are from the looks of it. They are now out today about 11 articles that support they are doing what they said they were going to do in that regard to intensive media campaign. They say they're partnering up with banks, money exchanges, airports, hotels, etc. to get them up and running with the new master and visa cards for external expenses to get paid. They're doing the media blitz to make sure everyone knows that all there is left to do is let their new external exchange rate get applied to those cards. In my opinion, that is... Where the CBI will need to do need to be timely ahead of the Gazette, in my opinion. That time clock, in my opinion, is about to sound alarms. Okay, now Bob the tax man said, I've had several people come to me and they're always saying, What about this? Way to convert this and a way of being able to do it as a capital gains. I hear this all the time. In the world of the IRS, everyone thinks it's a set hardcore thing, but it's really quite subjective. There are all kinds of nuances when it comes to the IRS code, so you're going to want a professional assisting you who has experience in this particular domain. So when you go do something with your dinar, you need to remember it's not a registered commodity, but it also does not fall into the IRS 1256 code. It doesn't fit. When you go into the bank or any place to exchange your dinar, when you bought it, it doesn't make any difference. Remember, you're reporting this to the IRS as ordinary income. All you have all you have to have is the value when you bought it and the value when you exchanged it because it doesn't qualify for 1256. It doesn't qualify as a capital gain. Okay, Mark, this is from Mark Z. He said the news is not all bad in Iraq. CBI has been very active this week, posting many good articles. It's 100% been the U.S. Treasury stalling our release, is what I'm told. I guess they thought if they kept stalling it, the U.S. would maintain its control over world banks. Um, a question for Mark Z was, is it true that the U.S. Treasury owns $55 billion in dinar? Answer, I have heard that exact same figure. Question for Mark Z, is today value day? Answer, I do not know. I wish I did. Could it happen today? Yes, it could. We just don't know. Okay, now um, from Delta KTFA, um, an article, Deputy Prime Minister for Economic Affairs and Minister of Finance chairs the first meeting of the preparation of the state budget strategy 2020 to 2022. Um, quote, on the other hand, the exchange rate policy and the monetary policy strategy of the central bank were discussed, end quote. More confirmation that the coming 2020 budget will be a new rate. Okay, and now lastly from Sandy F. Sandy F. said, Holiday Inn is actually accepting other currencies for motel room payment. The idea is incorrect and obviously causing some confusion. Online payments are invariably done by a payment processor and they determine currency requirement, not the company concerned. It should also be borne in mind that in order to make payment, you would need a card funded in the currency selected. If Iraqi banks issue cards in IQD, it would be up to the processor if such cards were accepted. Nothing to do with Article 8, although wider use of the currency is a move in the right direction. And that's all for now. Thanks for tuning in.